All right, we're live. Go ahead. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. Uh, this is a public meeting convened to review the FY22 Indiana Arts Commission Arts Program Support Grant application for Region 1. We'll also be reviewing the We at the Community Foundation of St. Joseph in Region 2. My name is Dustin Ritchie. I am the production director for Indiana Dunes Tourism, and I'll be acting as the facilitator today for today's panel. Uh, today is April 27, 2001, and we are meeting online and streaming live for applicants and the public to observe. We welcome applicants and other guests who may be listening in today and would like to remind everyone that there is to be no direct con contact or conversation about the evaluation and disposition of applicants before, during, or after the panel meeting between panelists and applicants. At this time, I'll invite panelists and staff to introduce themselves, stating their name, occupation, and where they are from in the state. I'll call out, call out your name and let's start with the different panelists. Uh, Mary Fell. Good morning, I'm Mary Fell. I um, represent Purdue Extension in the community development and I am uh, working in LaPorte County but live in Chesterton and Porter County. Thank you. Elaine Mancini. Good morning. Uh, I, until recently, was the executive director of the Museum of Miniature Houses. I also am the grant writer for Actors Theater of Indiana, and I live in Hamilton County. Jane Lohmeyer. Uh, hi, I'm a former high school art teacher, uh, currently an adjunct at Valparaiso University and co-director of All About Art Camp, and I live in Porter County. Thank you, and Jessica Knudsen, Bainey. Hi, good morning. I am the Grants and Stewardship Manager at Arts for Learning, located and living in Indianapolis. I'd also like to introduce some of the staff. Kelly Freeman. Hi, I'm the Executive Assistant with South Shore Arts and the IAC Region 1 Regional Arts Partner, and that includes Lake, Porter, and LaPorte County. Paige Sharp. Hi, my name is Paige Sharp. I'm the Deputy Director of Programs for the Indiana Arts Commission. And Ben Thomas. Hi, I'm Ben Thomas. I am the Indiana Arts Commission intern and technical support for this panel. Thank you, everyone. Now we'll begin the panel review. This is how the pro panel process will work. I'll announce the application we will review and ask the first reader to begin the discussion. The first reader will provide their assessment of the application based upon the evaluation criteria and their perspective. Panelists, please note that the application does not need to be recapped since everyone has read it. Just provide your comments. After the first reader is finished, I will ask the second reader to present any new, additional, or opposing comments. We're not looking for consensus, just a full evaluation from the different perspectives panelists bring to the table. After the second reader has finished, I will open the discussion to the full panel to offer their perspectives. Remember, in the interest of time, we are only looking for new, additional, or opposing viewpoints. If a panelist has a conflict of interest, we will place the panelist video and audio on hold during the application's evaluation. However, no conflicts of interest exist on this panel today. Finally, once the application has been reviewed by the full panel, we will ask the panel to update their scores in the online system. It is common for scores to change as a result of this broader discussion. These scores save automatically, uh, but we, we ask that you save again manually just as another uh, precaution. Are there any uh, questions? All right, well then let's begin. So uh, our first application on the list that we will be evaluating is the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Northwest Indiana with first reader, Mary Fell and second reader, Elaine Mancini. Mary. Great, so for me, the Boys and Girls Club is gonna continue and enhance its fine arts program and developing those careers and um, exposing children to new and new arts and digital um, arts programs. So I thought that was a very interesting program. What I liked about them is that they have used surveys and community input to help um, with their development of their programs. Um, I would want to know a little bit more about what kind of artists and instructions um, that they're going to do in the first section for um, artist quality. Um, I would also like a little bit more information about your, um, what kind of arts training you're proposing for your staff. And I, I truly like that you are going to incorporate safety procedures and youth development um, into your staff development. 
it was great to see you have created an IDA committee and I applaud you for doing that. And I'm um, interested in the next phase to see how, what you come up with in your IDA com um, committee. I also like that you showed um, some short and long-term um, goals that you want to accomplish. And I just wanted a little clarification on your explanation of artists. On one side, you say 65, but another you say 180. So I just wanted a little more clarification in that role. But I thought your budget and timeline seemed detailed and very reasonable. Thank you, Mary. Uh, was there anything else? Wonderful. We'll take it over to the second reader, Elaine. Uh, <clears throat> I agree with, of course, everything that Mary just said. Uh, I found that the, uh, it's just, just a small thing that threw me off a little bit, is the examples of the four art pieces of artwork. Uh, they're, they're quite beautiful, but, excuse me, I have a sinus thing going on, but I would have liked captions to them uh, to identify age or, or, or something about the what I'm to explain further what I was looking at. Uh, I also had a confusion about the who, what artists were being considered, were they considering the art teachers as artists and the art instructors, ex instructors as artists or only the people who were putting pieces into the exhibition. Uh, I liked their mix of revenue sources. Uh, that it was very balanced, and uh, but I did see uh, it seemed like a missed opportunity in the budget for in-kind support, especially art supplies or food for the reception or gifts or ribbons or something like that. Uh, otherwise, the, the budget made total sense. Thank you. At this time, we'll open the discussion for the panel for any additional or new comments. Um, yes, I had two comments. Um, they didn't indicate that there were any Indiana artists benefiting financially, but I think that they um, failed to recognize the part of their art instructors who would have been Indiana artists. Um, I think it would also be beneficial to list their website with the social media web links. That's it. Are there other comments? They did, uh, I was impressed, they did list their Facebook page and they do have, and it's very impressive and active. Uh, with over 4,700 followers. So that's, that's a very uh, sizable audience. Other comments? All right. Seeing that the discussion is finished, I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores, update your online comments, and let me know if you need any more time. Is everyone ready for the next application? Perfect. All right. The next application will be uh, Caesar Battisti Lodge. Dustin, you're muted. It is Caesar Battisti Lodge uh, by Jess Jessica Knudsen Bainey, is our first reader. Hi, yeah. So I thought this concept was really great. I love to see um, the inclusion of culinary artists among the other variety of art forms. Um, some of the artists though were unclear if they were Indiana artists or not, just um, referencing where these artists were from would have been helpful um, for the panelists with that information. Um, it was, I also really appreciated um, seeing the successful marketing tactics that they aim to continue. Um, one note that I have is that um, 
um, that it says that um, any contributor or volunteer is open to having an impact on the development and the planning of the festival. However, I would have liked to hear more about how they plan to do that and the ways that they market their volunteers and any participant to be involved in this process. Um, it notes that there are a lot of other groups um, that do participate in this um, planning process, although they are very important to the logistics of this. So it would have been nice to see how they intended to um, incorporate more community engagement in that process. Um, additionally, um, other than social media, I would have liked to see how they um, aim to target um, their audience in this um, planning process. And then um, only the only other concern that I had is that the budget was unclear. Um, the expenses and income did not match. So um, with the notion that they should have matched, um, more clarification on that would be um, helpful. Thank you, Jessica. Oh, was there any additional comments? All right, then let's move it over to the second reader, Jane Lohmeyer. Uh, I concur with uh, Jessica. Um, I think that the it looks like it's great fun. I liked that the festival is free. Um, and I thought, uh, for uh, idea, community engagement and idea. Uh, it's a good idea to remember that underserved communities uh, doesn't just refer to ethnic groups, but also to communities of people who might not have easy access, um, i.e. transportation, uh, lack of internet access, et cetera. So um, again, you know, more outreach there. Um, the project seems really well organized. Uh, I did have a question about the budget and uh, especially since their income was almost double their expenses. That's it. Thank you. At this time, we'll open it up for general discussion. So I'll go. I really appreciated their, um, for me, the, uh, the IDEA strategies of ADA compliance and especially the accessible restrooms and places for people to sit and free, free or some, uh, transportation to the event. I, I really like their marketing materials, especially the marketing statistics sheet. Uh, was very clear, easy to stand, uh, immediate impact. Were there any additional comments? Seeing that the discussion is finished, I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores, update your online comments. Is everyone ready for the next application or do you need more time? All right, we'll move on to the next application. The next application is Northwest Indiana Public Broadcasting Incorporated and our first reader is Elaine. Uh, Elaine, you're muted. Elaine, you're muted. This project has been around for over two decades. Um, uh, I like that they, and even so, I like that they are changing, they're adapting their, their format as they go along to, to fit best what the uh, current situation is. For example, going from the five minutes to the 30 minute programming. Um, uh, it, I'm, all stations do this, uh, but I'd like that they pointed out that the shows are archived for anyone to access later and that they're given to the artists uh, themselves for their own marketing purposes. Uh, I did feel that um, for the selection, um, uh, I was a little confused about the selection process because they said there's a special project director for South Shore Arts 
and the IAC Region 1 Council and their own com com um, community advisory board. But they later mentioned that only Tony Santucci is the, that he is the sole producer, manager, and decision maker. So I was a little confused about that dynamic. Uh, <clears throat> uh, they have featured, uh, I, I like their um, idea, they have featured Opportunity Enterprises for example, which uses art as a means to build confidence in those with disabilities uh, and the uh, substance abuse treatment center that uses art as rehabilitation treatment for its patients. So they're, they're really looking at a broad view of the impact of arts on um, human life. Um, the, it seems like a case could be made for indirect financial benefit of the artists. They put zero. But again, because they give those marketing materials, uh, the, the tapes of the sessions to the artists and for their own marketing purposes, it seems to be to me that there should be some kind of, of um, outcome from that, uh, that the artists may have seen more uh, uh, attention paid to them, if not actual sales. Uh, so there, there could be a, a better follow through, I think, with the artists to see how that uh, benefits them directly. <clears throat> um, uh, I didn't understand the statement of how they tried to utilize um, idea every step of the way. They say, for example, or it's given as an example, the program producers believe the universality nature of art is what makes the program so great for our diverse Northwest Indian audience. And I just don't understand what that means. Um, <clears throat> uh, surveys are filled out by the artists on what the impact was for them. Uh, I, so I thought that was very useful. However, I would have liked some sense of the results of those surveys, uh, what kinds of questions they are asked um, and as I said before, consider an indirect financial benefit. The web page survey is to come uh, to determine the public's awareness of arts across the region, and that's to be applauded. Again, I would have liked some indication of how they're going to structure that web page survey. <clears throat> I would have liked some textual explanation of the marketing PDF. They just uh, attach it as, uh, you know, to review it, but they don't give me any introduction to what I'm seeing. Their Facebook base has uh, 70, over 7,700 followers. So that's an extremely active audience. Um, the, the examples they gave from Mami Matsuda, Isaac Griffin, Gorilla Publishing is a wonderful, well-rounded selection of different types of art and artists. Uh, their timeline is perfect. I, I understood exactly what they were going to do and when, and uh, the, but I found their budget a little unclear. Thank you so much. At this moment, we'll be moving on to the second reader, Mary Fell. So I agree with a lot of things that Elaine said. Um, one of the things in the artist quality, I would like to know um, how are the artists financially benefited from? They don't or they don't really do a good job of um, explaining that. So I would like to learn a little bit more about potential showcases that they might be planning for this year. Um, I thought they had a great engagement from past participants, their advisory board, the South Shore Arts and community through many different avenues. So I applaud them for that. Um, and then I was confused a little bit um, what the acronym of CB or CPB grant was. Um, just as a recommendation for anybody out there, please um, write it out and then you can put the parentheses because um, I don't know everything, every acronym that's out there. Thank you. Um, at this moment, we'll open it up to general discussion. Um, I agree with everything um, both Elaine and Mary have said, um, especially under the uh, idea strategies, they really didn't outline any strategies. 
And I think that um, that really needs to be uh, beefed up. I would really like to see some very specific things that were done. You don't have to list everything if it's too much, but at least some. Are there any additional comments? Yes, I just have one comment. Um, I really enjoyed the marketing material. I think it is a great indication of the artistic talent of the artists that they are promoting. However, um, it was a little confusing because it was only uploaded in the marketing materials and not into the artistic talent documentation, which was left blank. So just for ease of panelist review in the future, even if it is the same documentation, it would be extremely helpful to upload in both places. Thank you. Any final comments? All right, seeing that the discussion is finished, I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Is everyone ready for the next application or do you need more time? We will then move on to the next application, which is the Community Foundation of St. Joseph County. The first reader is Jane Lohmeyer. Uh, this um, application is for uh, a free concert series in an outdoor park in South Bend. This is their 12th year. Um, the program sounds wonderful and they're so fortunate to have a lovely outdoor facility their um, artistic uh, documentation, their pictures and everything really gave you a sense of um, the breadth of, of the popularity. Um, I would like to see more intentional outreach to targeted communities that don't seem to be taking advantage of the concerts. Um, you know, in terms of uh, transportation in terms of um, uh, bringing in, you know, perhaps having buses come in to, you know, from communities that don't have a lot of uh, access, uh, promoting it that way. Um, in their uh, budget, they said they were sending out 1200 postcards, really doesn't seem like very much for South Bend area but um, they never said who those cards were targeted to. And I think that's a very important fact because obviously they feel that they're not reaching a certain element, but what is that? Where is it? Um, that's about it. Thank you, Jane. Uh, let's move to the second reader, Jessica knudsen -Bainey. Yes, I agree um, with much of what Jane has just said. I will add that I thought it was great to see that the performances were influenced by the audience. It would have been um, helpful to see how they received that specific information. I think the um, applicant did a great job um, articulating the artistic talent, um, as well as um, providing a thorough explanation of the idea strategies. Um, specifically, I really enjoyed hearing about um, marketing to the South Bend children and their families by sending the flyers, as well as partnering with um, nursing home facilities to transport the residents. And um, overall, um, as Jane had mentioned, I would also like to hear um, more about active representation of the community in the development and the planning stages of the program. Thank you. We will open the discussion to the panel for any additional or new comments. I found this particularly well written. Uh, the text was so easy to follow and I didn't have to go back and reread a section because of grammar or uh, uh, um, obscure vocabulary or anything else. I also thought the marketing materials were very clear. A lot of these outdoor festivals do assume that everybody knows 
what to do or how to do it um, or to go somewhere else to find more information, for example, about how to dress, what to bring, if you're allowed to bring chairs or food or whatever, um, what concessions there are available and amenities on site. And that's all in the marketing material. So uh, anybody gets the, it's the entire picture as soon as they read what it is about. Thank you. Are there additional comments? So I want to say it was very interesting survey and that it was shown that outdoor shows were less intimidating to audiences. And I have never even thought of that as um, an, an interesting impact that you've, you guys have gotten based on your surveys. And the only question I have is why do you only um, give your surveys out to well-attended um, events? Why can't we give to everyone during each of the four shows? Oh, I did want to add, not that it makes any difference in this particular application, but in their budget, a very large amount of the budget is dependent upon a, a donation from a particular family. And I would have liked in the budget discussion, uh, what would happen if that $20,000 disappeared for whatever reason? Any final comments? Seeing that the discussion is finished, I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Is everyone ready for the next application or do you need more time? Perfect, then we'll move on to the next application, which is Dua Sequenza, Sequenza Chamber Music Incorporated. And the first reader is Mary Fell. So Project Listen Up is um, short performances in a non-traditional venue and they've been going on for four years. I thought there was a good change that they've done with the COVID and the pandemic with going virtual and partnering with Lakeshore PBS. Um, I would like to know a little bit more information about what you're planning on for 2022. Um, a lot of the local artists will benefit, so and will financially benefit in the artist quality section. You have done a wide range of um, presentations to different organizations, and I commend you for um, going out and promoting your mission and your name out, including auto dealerships, hardware stores, which is an interesting ploy to get your name out there. Um, outside of the people that email you, um, word of mouth is great, but how can you utilize the input of the greater community? So, i.e. some of those organizations that you talk um, to to gain their um, input. Um, I thought you did a good job of talking about accommodations and accessibility issues, and Mintimeter is a good online tool to utilize um, for a survey in a quick amount of time. Um, I thought you did a good job of your timeline. And uh, although I would put the different explanations of your shows from this section, the great timeline into the artist quality about the performers in your goal section and your budget seems uh, reasonable based on um, criteria. And that's it. Thank you, Mary. Let's move on to the second reader, Elaine Mancini. <laughs> I just loved, loved, loved that a classical music ensemble is performing only the works of living composers. So that goes a long, long way to, toward idea uh, because if, uh, everybody else has to, because of the cost of licensing rights, is performing the music of, you know, um, of uh, deceased <laughs> men from two or three centuries ago. Uh, <clears throat> I found, I, I didn't see the, I love the themes, but I didn't see the connection between the ensemble music and the history of the Haskell Barker Railroad Car Company. Uh, I somehow missed what that was all about. I also applaud their involvement in the Chamber of Commerce. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that's something that a lot of arts performing organizations uh, or ensembles completely ignore what the business community has to offer. 
uh, and they are utilizing, obviously getting contacts and networking through the Chamber of Commerce. So that is definitely to be applauded. Uh, on their website, uh, I thought that they, they did a wonderful job explaining who they are, what they do. I loved the story about the crystal flute. Uh, I thought it was extremely interesting that's, that that is what she uses. Um, I thought it was engaging, upbeat, and it has a very friendly tone throughout the, the website. <clears throat> I, considering that they're performing uh, live comp living composers, I, I, I don't know, but the licensing fee fees in the budget seemed awfully low. They were just a few hundred dollars. And so I'm not sure how they, they get that to work. Um, and I, I thought that, um, I, I was curious why they don't apply for other grants, um, because they do not have that as, as part of their budget income. Thank you, Elaine. We'll now open the discussion to the other panelists for comments. Um, I agree with everything that was said. Um, I do, you know, their collaboration with their um, venues just seems amazing, but I would have liked to see more planning input from the patrons of those venues um, because I think that's important also, not just the uh, proprietors. Thank you, are there any additional comments? Yeah, I just have one comment. Uh, I really enjoy that um, this project is unique and that you are going into the communities where these, um, where your audience lives and works. With that being said, as an outreach and versus inreach, if that had been added to the proposal as an idea strategy, it could have strengthened that piece of the proposal. And any final comments? Seeing that the discussion is finished, I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Is everyone ready for the next application or do you need more time? We'll move on to the next application. The next application is Genesius Guild, and we'll start with Jessica Knudsen Bainey. So, this was a, a very interesting proposal and concept. Um, with this being a new show and having um, over 40 shows presented, um, it would have been helpful to know how um, this specific. Um, project and show was chosen and how um, you might have gauged, uh, how they might have engaged the community interest for this specific show. Um, it's notes that there's open call, so it is understandable that um, it is not noted who these artists are that will be working on this particular show. Um, however, um, any additional information regarding the background of um, an overview of participants that have been in shows previously, um, sharing a variety of their skills and talents could have strengthened this portion of um, the proposal as it relates to artistic talent um, and being shows, um, I would have really enjoyed seeing an actual clip of one of the past shows as opposed to just seeing photos. Um, looking down at um, the community engagement and idea, um, I really appreciate the transparency regarding the idea efforts. Um, however, it's mentioned that the organization is actively um, thinking about how to better help um, those with financial barriers and those who need special accommodations. Um, with that being said, I would have appreciated knowing what the outcome of that is. Um, if there are no outcomes at this point, a list of those ideas um, that have evolved around that active thinking regarding idea would have also strengthened this proposal. Um, in terms of budget, I found it to be reasonable for the project and the project management also appears to have um, relevant experience and that is well articulated. Thank you. This time we'll move to the second reader, Jane Lohmeyer. Uh, with 
everything that um, Jessica said. Uh, I really like the fact that childcare was provided for the performers. I thought that was um, admirable. Um, I do think that it would be beneficial to develop more intentional idea strategies. Um, the community input regarding planning seems to be limited to church members. It would be good to see community input from outside the church also. Um, and uh, I think they should try to extend their reach beyond those activities connected to the church. It seemed um, that it was kind of insular and, and that they, they really needed a little more outreach in the, the planning stages. That's all. Thank you, Jane. At this moment, we'll open it up to the rest of the panel for discussion. So I thought it was a great idea to donate some of the ticket sales that you've got to first responders. And I commend you for um, taking that opportunity to provide community support, not only for first responders, but also your food pantries. Um, so that's all I have. Okay. I was, uh, I was really unclear of what their capacity was. So they said that uh, the typical audience, they give a typical audience number per production, and it is surmised that, quote, there should be a larger amount than we normally see, but there's no indication of how many people are actually accommodated in this space and what the space, what are the, the attributes of the space? Is it a, a black box? Is it with is it just a, an auditorium type thing with a with an elevated stage and chairs? Or what is the space that it's going to be taking place in? It also is unclear. I I didn't know what they meant by offering a pre prelude of individual components prior to the theatrical performance. Uh, does that mean that they're going to be asking people where they were on September 11th? Or I, I just don't know what that means. And I thought that they might um, consider additional sources of revenue other than the IAC grant and ticket sales, such as, I don't know, refreshments or, or selling of some kind of mementos or something to, um, because they, they don't have a very balanced income. Thank you, Elaine. Are there any final comments? All right, seeing that the discussion is finished, I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Is everyone ready for the next application or do you need more time? All right, we'll move on to the next application. Our seventh application is Humane Indiana Incorporated and the first reader is Mary Fell. So Humane is going to te um, teaching the art of wildlife and they've been going on for five years. Um, what I would like to know a little bit more is how they're going to incorporate animals and art together. I would like a little more information into that. Um, one thing you've learned a lot is having different ages or art, different artists for different age groups and now incorporating families into your uh, program. As I said before in another um, panel or uh, panel discussion, um, the acronym. So I was a little confused of what um, H I E O P and H I W and H I S in um, the H I W and H I S in your budget, and then your H I E O P um, in your um, community engagement section. Um, what those acronyms um, meant for. Um, I would like to know a little bit um, more about the input from your community to guide your program. Um, this question could have been capitalized in a little bit to, for me to give a, a greater score. You did have a lot of great tools for um, using impact. Um, I would like to know a little bit more about the ID strategies. Um, you had strategies, but they weren't about ac increasing access, diversifying participants and accommodation. So I'd like to um, know a little bit more. I thought you had good information about your project manager, but I would like to know a little bit about those artists that are gonna help in the different age groups. 
Um, you had a good timeline for after the event has started, but I would like to know a little bit about what you're doing ahead of time. So those, um, the marketing, the planning, getting your artists, I would like to have uh, a little bit more in your um, timeline. And as far as budget, I thought that was um, realistic for the program or project. Thank you, Mary. Moving to a second reader, Jessica Knudsen Bainey. Yeah, so as Mary mentioned, um, I would have liked to hear um, actually any of the idea strategies or um, that you plan to implement for this, as well as um, any indication of how you um, plan to use the input of your target population to be included in the development of the project. I did not see any of that information in the proposal. And then also um, to the timeline, it was also a little confusing in regards to if this was all um, programming specifically to the art wildlife paintings, or if some of this might just be general programming to um, the center. So that would have been helpful to note some of that, as well as um, the order again, um, starting maybe with the beginning of the, um, of the grant would have been helpful um, since it did not start in that way. And then additionally, um, knowing that two of the art teachers would be collaborating, uh, a short bio for each of them would have also helped with the project management portion. Thank you, Jessica. At this moment, we'll open it up to discussion to the panel for any additional or new comments. Um, I agree with all of those things that were said. Um, I did have one more comment about the budget where um, uh, it says I, IAC grant request, it's $3,500. However, in their budget, they indicate $2,500. So there's a conflict there. Um, that's it. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I could, um, I agree with everything that's been said. Uh, I could not find this project anywhere on the website. Um, Jessica indicated there was some confusion about the project itself. And, and on the website, for example, I couldn't find it under events. I couldn't find it under general public programs. I couldn't find it under wildlife events and I couldn't find it under education. Uh, they have 23,000 followers on Facebook. So, you know, it's huge, but I'm very confused why there are two different Facebook pages, one in Valparaiso and one in Munster. Uh, uh, in their budget, they're asking for $8,790 for travel and transport of animals and supplies. That seems to me awfully high and begged for a little more explanation of why that plays such a prominent role in the budget. So Elaine, I'm gonna piggyback on there. There's one thing I forgot to say. Um, I was a little confused on, are they uh, in their um, in their explanation, they talked about they're gonna do more in their facility, but then in a um, different part, they kind of talk about they're going to different facilities, they're going to different schools or other facilities. So I'm, I was a little confused on, are they just staying in one location or going uh, into different locations? Are there any additional comments? Seeing that the discussion is finished, I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Is everyone ready for the next application or do you need more time? All right, we'll move on to the next application. The next application is the Indiana Dunes Environmental Learning Center. And our first reader is Elaine Mancini. Bear with me one second, I'm not there yet. Of course.
<clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> overall, I was unclear what the arts project is. In one section, the applicant states that the arts activities are an important component of all the programs. Uh, and there are a lot of programs, but the budget for the art project is only $12,500, which is small if the arts activities are in the overnight summer camp, the monthly workshops, the school year programs, et cetera. Uh, the narrative uh, might establish more clearly what the art activities are. They're clear on the website, for example, but they're not clear in this project application. A uh, content concern involves the artist, Kevin, who quote, performs in an authentic period clothing with proper accoutrements in first person style. I thought that begged for more explanation. Does the authentic period clothing refer to indigenous peoples from the dunes? If so, would this not also be important to point out in the idea section along with perhaps Billy's um, and, and mispronouncing this Anish, Anishnebek art programs. <clears throat> in the idea section, uh, in one part of the narrative, it says that parents fill out an online survey and that teachers and chaperones fill out evaluations on iPads. Uh, it does say that the kids do and the kids are the, the participants. So filling in an evaluation designed for children uh, it would be the same thing as that for adults, would also help the children in developing their critical thinking. In, it's intriguing to learn of the more sophisticated evaluation process that is being developed as part of the National Park Service cohort. Uh, talking about uh, acronyms and so on, I, I, I realized later as I was going through the application that the dunes is a national park, but I would have liked that put uh, set it out immediately. So I didn't have to then come to this realization as I was reading through it. Uh, I would have liked to have known more about this NPS cohort, or at least when it is expected to be completed by the university researchers. The description of diversity in various aspects of activities, training and hiring is well articulated. Many of these factors, such as wheelchairs for the trails, <clears throat> flex flexible menu plans, equal opportunity employment are often neglected to be mentioned in an application and they are all completely valid. I loved the Spanish section on the website. It was very well done uh, and wish I could see that more often on other websites <clears throat> about project management. Excuse me. There's an interesting mix of backgrounds of the six artists. Uh, marketing material is, uh, however, is one page of photographs that are neither revealing nor informative. Um, giving all, given all the emphasis on the underserved and scholarship recipients and reduced fee, lunch, reduced or free lunches, there is a surprising lack of diversity in the photographs on social media and in the marketing material. So it seems to belie what the, what the uh, text is saying. I would have liked more data on the marketing. It's unclear to whom the marketing flyer is targeted or how it gets to its audiences. A large percentage of the audience is school children, but there is no discussion on the partnership they have with schools in the area. The Facebook posts are frequent and well done. There's a nice variety of program news, work anniversaries and preparatory activities. I particularly like that they show who's behind doing this. It, it, it uh, you know, personalizes and humanizes the programs. The Instagram images are attractive as well and with an, uh, an impressive 668 posts and more than 1300 followers. The timeline I thought was, could have been more detailed. Uh, the budget for this project is very small compared to the operating budget, although the budget itself is balanced and reasonable, um, i.e. the amount of the grant that would go toward paying the artists. Uh, income from the program fees would offset staff time and other grants would offset cost of supplies. Uh, I thought overall the writing could be more logically presented. For example, Wilson the bison 
is prominently mentioned, but it's unclear from the text and the photographic support what Wilson does, if Wilson keeps getting repainted, if that's the object of having Wilson around that uh, somebody else comes and paints him a different way. Uh, the overall work is uh, of the education center is definitely uh, to be applauded and the description of students firsts, uh, first time they're away from home, first time they identify constellations, first time they have a camp campfire um, is I thought uh, emotive and compelling. Thank you, Elaine. We'll move to the second reader, Jane Lohmeyer. Uh, Elaine did a superbly thorough job. Um, the uh, one comment under um, idea strategies um, and community engagement, I think it's commendable that they work closely with teachers and artists when planning, but I think they should also include uh, stakeholders in those planning meetings. Um, the timeline was, was difficult, as Elaine mentioned. Uh, in the instructions, they're asked to list the timeline, and uh, it, I think it should include planning, hiring, advertising, um, implementation, all of those things. In their budget, they listed staff time. I'm assuming that means uh, salaries for full-time or part-time staff. But uh, for me, when I read it, it just, it was confusing. I was like, what does staff time mean? So um, it would be helpful to explain that. And that's it. Thank you. We'll now open the discussion to the panel for any additional or new comments. So I would have liked to know in the artist quality um, section, how the artists are gonna be financially benefited. And in that section, it, there was no um, beneficial financially um, um, in, located in that section. Thank you, are there additional comments? In, in relation to the idea strategy in regards to the scholarship, it would have been nice to know if these scholarships um, were extended beyond the nominations of the teachers? And if so, how these scholarships are also being marketed um, to these youth to apply for the scholarships outside of the teacher nominations? And if that is so, it would have been um, a great use of the marketing material um, of how that's advertised. Thank you. Are there any further comments? Seeing that the discussion is finished, I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Is everyone ready for the next application or do you need more time? Perfect, we'll move on to the next application. The next application is for Internas the International Friendship Gardens Music Festival Incorporated. And our first reader is Mary Fell. So the International Friendship Gardens are gonna utilize the LaPorte County Symphony Orchestra for a concert in the garden and trying to develop those cultural growth and music appreciation and education. And this is a one year experience. Um, they reinforced um, education and entertainment and utilized some suggestions that they have changed from last year. Uh, my one question in the artist quality section is, will the Hoosier stars be compensated? Um, and would like to know a little bit more about the symphony and how many um, artists and performers are part of the symphony. I thought it was good that the community input of classical um, and there needs to be more of a contemporary um, feel to was good. But what about the greater community, the ones that are not, not attending, what are their opinions on um, the music festival? I thought that accommodating and waiving fees for those 18 and younger was a good strategy 
Um, but how are you going to increase access and diversity in terms of your participants, but also those that come um, to the show? Um, impact of of, for increased participants, you had a one-on-one -on -one interviews, but maybe a survey could be a great way to get more input in the future. Um, you had a great information on your project manager, and I think you can um, fully develop and present this um, performance. And you had a good detailed um, timeline that was, um, I could see that you could accomplish what you said. Um, you did have a lot of in-kind donations. Um, I always say that I always look at independentsector.org for the amount of money per volunteer hour, and that's about $24 per um, hour for Indiana. So instead of their $10, you could have had $24 and put the um, independentsector.org as a, um, a site. And your budget other, other than that seems reasonable. Thank you, Mary. Our second reader is Jessica knudsen Bain. Mary did a great job giving a very thorough um, evaluation. I would like to add um, that it was great to hear that you, uh, that they were incorporating more contemporary music based off the input and feedback from last year. However, um, in terms of those who they're serving, that it is mentioned that they hope to serve families of all ages, socioeconomic levels, abilities, locations, and cultures. Um, it would have been great to hear any additional thoughts on how they might achieve this through their idea strategies um, and how they plan to market to these groups. It was very unclear of how they were hoping to serve these, um, these different families. So that would have been, um, that would have really helped this proposal. Um, and in addition to the input from last year's attendees, um, it would have been great to hear how you might include um, those from last year into the development process as well as those you might be aiming to serve. And then the budget, it seemed just maybe like it could have had a little more explanation in it. It seemed like there might be a few things that might have been, might be missing from there. So just a little more clarification on the budget would have been helpful. Thank you. At this time, we'll open discussion to the panel for any additional or new comments. Um, I would have liked to uh, heard a little bit more, read a little bit more about um, the more, contem more contemporary music that they plan. Um, for instance, you know, what would this be? Um, it, it just wasn't clear. Um, they use in, in the uh, community engagement and idea section, they use the word hope a lot. And um, it's nice to hope, but I would have liked to have seen strategies that would have um, indicated how their hopes could be realized uh, and those to reach underserved. Um, I'd like to see more intentional outreach. They had a uh, YouTube video, which I really wanted to see and it was unavailable when I tried to see it. That's it. Thank you, Jane. Are there any additional comments? I was able to access the YouTube video. Uh, I thought it was well done to show off the setting and communicate the transformational power of live music, but it did not uh, uh, display any kind of diversity or address why people should come hear the music. Um, so in, in, unless you're, uh, you're in tune with classical music, then uh, you, you, you're not going to be welcomed into that listening space. Uh, I was also curious about access. Often botanical gardens are places that can be accessed only by car. Uh, so that limits access to many people. Uh, it might be on a bus line or something like that, but it doesn't say when the concerts take place. Uh, for example, during the day when the buses are running, most buses don't run at night um, or at night, uh, which cuts down on seniors who don't like to go out to drive at night or go out at night. Um, and that guy, so it was, it was just not clear on how they were going to uh, accommodate people who might come. I also thought that uh, alternate sources of revenue could be explored. Uh, they are relying solely on the grant for their income. 
And uh, does that mean that uh, if they don't get the grant, they're not going to do the project? Um, uh, I think, hold on, let me just check at the top here. Um, uh, all right, I'm not sure if they addressed if they were going to do that or not. Um, for example, for alternate sources of revenue, they, I realize this is a, a new program. It's only in its second year, uh, but they might uh, pursue joint sponsorships with the botanical garden or seek individual and or corporate donations. Are there any further comments? Hearing none, we will now conclude that the discussion is finished. I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Is everyone ready for the next application or do you need more time? All right, we will then move on to the next application. The next application is La Arkansas Theater Group and our first reader is Jane Lohmeyer. Uh, this grant is for a theater camp in Cedar Lake. This is their second year of camp. Um, and students will learn all aspects of theater production. Um, I, I think the idea of including parents in this is great. They mentioned that um, in the prior year, they would have parents sitting around waiting for their children to be done and uh, they decided to put them to work and this is great. Uh, I would have liked more information on the artists um, they uh, didn't mention uh, who or what they had uh, in line. And if that information is available, then some information on artists they had used in the past would be helpful. So we were better able to gauge the quality of what they were doing. Um, and that goes for the teachers as well. Um, under community engagement and idea, it would have uh, been good to have some intentional outreach to underserved communities. Uh, while they're welcoming, the underserved might not know or be aware of their project. So uh, I would have liked to have seen some very directed and pinpointed outreach. Um, and in the management section was written in the first person and I think it's a better idea to uh, write that information in the third person. Um, that's it. Yes, that's all I have. Thank you, Jane. Our second reader is Elaine Mancini. Uh, I would have uh, liked more information in the artistic sample. Uh, I like to be told what I'm about to see, why I'm about to see it, and then see it. Um, if you haven't gathered that <laughs> from my previous comments. Um, a, a suggestion, which has nothing to do with the quality of the application, uh, is that they might consider awarding certificates as a tangible memento of participating in the camp. I would have liked to see more attention paid to the benefits of being an audience member or a camp participant on the website and Facebook. Instead, they on those uh, vehicles, they emphasize only the longevity uh, uh, that of the organization that speaks, longevity speaks to a conditioned audience, not uh, a new audience or a diverse audience or uh, an increased audience. Uh, concerning the management, the statement about the staff being able to make the project happen is very beautiful and uplifting, but doesn't indicate, it doesn't answer the question of the title, the role, the responsibilities, and the relevant experience of the lead project manager for the camp. 
Thank you. We will now open discussion to the panel for any additional or new comments. So I thought um, having a potential AS, ASL interpreter was a great way to have an accommodation in that um, the idea strategy if there was a person who needed that. I really appreciate that um, the camp decided to um, open and incorporate adults also in this camp. Um, I was curious as to how um, the interest from the adults in actually participating in this camp, um, how they might have um, received that information. In addition, um, I would have been interested to know um, how they intend to support the different learning styles of children and adults in this process of the camp. Um, and then as it relates to the audience, um, it, it was really unclear how they came, to, um, how they indicated, how they arrived at the numbers of how many adults and children that they plan to have. In addition um, to that, it was unclear how they um, might market to their diverse audiences. Um, and um, just a little more information about who their intended audiences would have been helpful. It says um, little to um, no theater experience. However, I think that that could be a very broad audience. So being a little more specific in how and who your audience is and how you intend to um, market and engage them in this would have been very helpful. Thank you. Are there any further comments? Seeing that the discussion is finished, I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Is everyone ready for the next application or do you need more time? Wonderful. Then we will move on to the next application. Our next application is Michigan City Chamber Music Festival Incorporated. And our first speaker is Jessica Knudsen Bainey. So this appears to be a very long standing program and it's evident that the program has evolved um, over the years as participants have um, provided the feedback, which is great. Um, in terms of artists, it is, um, they noted that they have four local artists and five that are not local to Indiana. However, it's also unclear if the additional seven um, will be sought out here in Indiana or if they will be looking elsewhere for those artists. Um, moving to community engagement, it is somewhat unclear of who they aim to serve with this project. Um, but there's not really um, a clear indication of how they intend to broaden the audience. Um, I would have liked to hear um, less about the accommodations potentially to the current audience and then um, a greater focus on um, how the series is being more equitable, accessible and inclusive. Um, there were examples provided, but I do feel as though these accommodations and strategies should have been more of the focal points. Um, and additionally, I would have liked to hear more about the involvement with the church as one of your idea strategies um, and a little more about that collaboration as well on um, the marketing and audience efforts and reaching um, those broader audiences. Um, overall, I, it was really great to see that um, the panelists feedback previously um, encouraged a more formalized, um, a formalized um, data approach for this project. Um, I'm unsure what that looks like previously, but I do believe that these methods look extremely um, thorough. And <clears throat> overall, I think it, um, you listed, they listed an extensive, um, extensive list of skilled um, project management team. And I also think that the budget and the timeline were extremely detailed. Thank you. At this time, we'll open the discussion to the panel for any additional or new comments. So I'm the second reader, I think. Oh my gosh. That's, I <laughs> that's okay. Here. I was gonna speak anyway. But um, on the description, they say they're gonna do five concerts, three children's programs, a music camp, and three, and three to five other concerts. But in their um, artist quality about the purpose, they don't talk about the three to five winter um, winter content, uh, concerts or the children's camp. So I was a little confused. Are they just focusing on the 
budget aspect on that one. Um, I also agree with Jessica. They had a very detailed timeline with exactly who was going to do what. And on the budget, I like that they had the actual and pending on the income. So actual, they, they're going to get the grant or they have that grant in hand and pending is they might get it. Um, the budget seems reasonable. And as I said at the beginning, where's the children's program? So is there supplies for those and that need to be incorporated in the budget? That seemed a little off to me on the budget. Thank you, Mary. And that was Mary Fell as the second reader for this application. Now at this time, we will open it up to discussion from the rest of the panel for any additional or new comments. Uh, I just have a recommendation on um, their uh, focusing on the artistic quality of the event. Um, it would be beneficial if you're putting in an audio clip to um, not put in the entire thing, but focus on one particular area of the video clip, panelists are only required to uh, listen to three minutes, I believe it is, and um, they might not select the right three minutes. There, you know, if there's an introduction, um, other parts, so cut that down and, and just keep it focused to what you would like the panelists to hear. Thank you, Jane. Are there further comments? Hearing none, we'll conclude that the discussion is finished and I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Is everyone ready for the next application? All right, then we will move on to the next application. Our next application is Michigan, Michigan City Messiah. Our first reader is Elaine Mancini. Uh, I just wanted to point out that the project summary uh, is meant to be written in third person, whereas here it's written in first person. Uh, after 56 years, uh, they have a lot of experience doing this. Uh, their mission statement, however, is unclear to me. It's to make experiences available to all members of the region. I don't know who members of a region are. Do, uh, do they mean residents? Um, and, you know, as some indication of how they might plan to do that. The... Uh, uh, the commitment to in-person and online surveys is impressive. I did not understand what the applicant meant by, quote, learned necessity of creating expansive operational timelines and refine, refining our workflow. Uh, does that mean that they needed to allot more time and to use their time more efficiently? I was not clear what they were trying to say. I'm curious that the chorus comprises non-audition singers while the soloists and the orchestra are, audition, are auditioned or selected and paid. Uh, they might consider auditioning the singers to ensure quality voices. And this is just a suggestion. Again, it's not based on, uh, it's not the quality of their application, but um, to consider auditioning singers to ensure quality voices and add a sing-along for the general community where amateurs and those who just want to sing but have little talent to do so can participate. <clears throat> uh, and I'm not sure they seem to imply that non-auditioning opens it up more to the general community, but they don't say so. Uh, so that, I think that that's a diversity strategy and an inclusion strategy, but I'm not sure that it is. Um, I love the open dress rehearsal policy with the nearby soup kitchen uh, beneficiaries being able to hear and or attend uh, the dress rehearsal. I'm curious, however, how the rest of the underserved community gets to the church. Uh, is it located in a downtown area with bus lines or other forms of transportation? 
the uh, Baroque music is a niche interest. So I'm not, it wasn't made clear how they draw in newbies um, or they say music lovers, but what are they doing to inform or educate about Handel, about the Messiah, about choral music, about Baroque music? Uh, Donna, the, I think she's the CEO, uh, uh, her letter to the patrons, chorus and orchestra about the Messiah in 2020, I thought was extremely well done. It's clear, transparent and comprehensive. Uh, about the budget, the expenses do not add up to match the income. Uh, the expenses add up only to $16,325. Uh, the uh, whereas the income is $25,625. Uh, possibly missing, because I didn't see these, are marketing costs and the stipend paid to the orchestra members, because remember they're paying some of the soloists and the orchestra members, but I do not see that reflected in the, um, uh, in the budget. And um, uh, the, the Facebook page, the, the Michigan City Messiah Facebook page has only seven, 175 people following, but the audience uh, reach, but the performances are stated to reach an audience of 1200 people. So there's a huge discrepancy there and seems a lot of room for expansion of social media outreach. Uh, I was, um, intrigued by the comment, quote, we are particularly interested in growing an educational component to our offerings by bringing vocal and choral music to schools, unquote. And I wish I could have heard more about that idea. Thank you, Elaine. We'll move to our second reader, Jane Lohmeyer. Um, I, uh, thought that the project sounded really uh, commendable. I would like to have seen at least one Indiana artist as a featured soloist. Um, I would think that uh, they could come up with somebody from Indiana. Um, I happen to like the fact that the choral participants did not need to audition. Um, I think that that is a, a wonderful way to get people involved who are music lovers and may not have the talent themselves. Um, Elaine's idea of having a separate section for that is, is also a good idea, but um, as a non-singer who loves to sing, uh, I think not having to audition would be great. I'd like to see more specific um, idea strategies, especially with regards to diversity and access. And um, I, the total cash expenses and the total cash income uh, uh, do agree. So I'm not quite clear what Elaine was talking about in the parts that uh, didn't, didn't agree. That is, Thank you, Jane. We'll now open discussion to the panel for any additional or new comments. So I wanna commend them for having a 10% minority representation in the orchestra and also a 50% minority representative in 2019 for their um, guest artist. As I agree, there's more idea strategies to be de developed, but I commend you for starting that process. And Jane, I think it's on the, cat or the um, income or the expenses, it says it's added up to um, 20, 25, 625, but we have 12, 300, 115. That's where it, there was a discrepancy. Are there additional comments? Seeing that the discussion is finished, I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores and update your online comments.
Is everyone ready for the next application or do you need more time? Then we'll move on to the next application. Our next application is Neighbors Broadcasting, DBA WVLP LP. And our first reader is Jessica Knudsen Bainey. I greatly apologize if we could have Mary go ahead and be first reader and me second. I'm having some technical difficulties at this time. Of course, thank you so much. Mary? Okay, thanks Jessica for putting me on the spot. It's okay. <laughs> I have everything written down, so it's it's pretty easy. Um, so what I would, it's an arts on the air. So they had the acronym after that. So I applaud them. And they're doing um, Northwest Indiana arts, literacy, um, theater and music. So looking at the artistic journey throughout the time, uh, nine years. I had never heard of um, arts on the air before. So that was a very, um, Incre um, easy thing for me to learn about and I'm going to listen more. So you have a, re you have a listener now. Um, so what I would like to learn a little bit more about the guests and what you would, or who you would have on the show in the future, um, maybe just planning, maybe we're gonna have one theater group, one um, artist, one um, children's group, um, if you don't know who they're going to be. Um, you did um, use some listener surveys, so that is a great thing. But what else have you done for the community for those that are not have not listened to your um, arts on the air and understand why they aren't listening? Uh, maybe it's a promotion um, aspect or a marketing aspect. Um, I would like to a little bit more on your accommodations and how you would utilize to prevent barriers for those who do not have maybe a radio or um, on Zoom, as you said in the past. Um, I would add the survey to question number four that you had talked about. Um, you had good social media, um, good information on your project manager, but I would like more detailed information about your timeline. So the planning process, the promoting, and even after you've done the shows, your listener surveys. Um, I thought you had a really good uh, in-kind donations to add to this. Um, I thought the budget was doable and you're not asking for the full $5,000 for the grant. So Jessica, you can take it away after that. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Uh, Jessica, are your technical difficulties okay now? Um, they are not. So I will um, give brief comments on what I do recall. Again, I apologize. I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with this. Um, um, I noticed in the budget, the ask was only for the partial ma max amount. So um, my only question is, could there have been um, additional requests to max out that funding that might enhance this programming? Um, I realize there are a lot of artists, but um, maybe even potential um, stipend to financially benefit. I do see that the marketing um, and um, plebis, pub, publicity and promotions of the artist um, indirectly um, financially benefit them, but um, just some thoughts based on the budget. And I apologize, that is all I have. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, we'll open it up to general discussion from the rest of the panel. Are there any further comments? Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say that I am unable to access um, and I'm guessing everybody is uh, unable to access the grants. Um, it comes up as an error in applications. So unable to change anything on the, um, the website. Um, again, I have the same suggestion as I did for the uh, other grant that it would be beneficial to edit the audio clip uh, and focus in because each one of them started with an introduction and you know went on and on and and so um, by focusing in you have the advantage of getting the panelists to listen to exactly what you would like them to hear in terms of the quality of your programming so um, I think that's important. I agree they need more uh, intentional idea strategies. Um, that would be nice. And uh, since their timeline is so long, it would be beneficial to give an example of one month's, an example of one month's preparation for the shows 
just so we'd have an idea. That's it. Thank you, Jane. Are there any additional comments? At this time, we would normally have the applicants uh, update their online comments and finalize your scores. Uh, perhaps write down your final comments as we uh, investigate the technical difficulties. Yeah, I'm trying to look at it, link into it, guys. I'm able to get in, so I'm not sure what the situation is. Um, but like uh, Dustin said, just go ahead and notate any uh, score changes or any concerns they may have, and I'll keep you posted. Thank you, Paige. Does anyone need more time to write down comments? No. All right, then we'll move on to the next application. This is our final application for the day. It is Volunteer Office for Community Accessibility Resource Training. And our first reader is Jane Lohmeyer. This is a first year project. Their goal is to create an accessible, interactive, multidisciplinary celebration for all ages and abilities. Um, the, I need, they need to expand on their answers. I thought the answers to all sections were uh, way too short. Um, they gave a, uh, a topic sentence and then that was about it. Um, and also uh, you need to make sure that you read the questions thoroughly. I would like to have had information on the artists, um, which is number two under describe the project demonstrating its artistic quality. In terms of community engagement and idea, uh, it would be helpful to expand on answers again, give more details. For example, how might the needs of people with mobility issues be addressed? You have painted a broad picture, but we need more specifics. Um, it would also be helpful to have more specifics in regards to the management of the project, especially since it is the first year. For example, who is responsible for what aspect and what is their expertise in that area? Um, the general project manager seemed very quali well qualified, but that doesn't mean that everything else is going to be well managed. So uh, we just need more specifics. That's it. Thank you, Jane. We'll move on to our second reader, Elaine Mancini. All right, bear with me because I'm going off my handwritten routes. Thank goodness I, <laughs> I wrote all of them out by hand because I can't access the uh, portal. Uh, I obviously agree with everything that Jane said. Um, I thought, uh, again, the use of an acronym of uh, VOCART, uh, in the, especially in the mission statement, was a little off-putting. I would have liked the full name of the organization for clarity's sake. Uh, they did a similar kind of event with Access for All, celebrating progress in our parks but it's totally unclear to me, which is all about the ADA, the anniversary of the ADA and how it related to design of parks, but um, was unclear of how the marketing material was going to relate to the new project. Um, Zuli is, it, it seems to hold like two or three different roles. Um, she's CEO of Causes for Change International in the video, but she's also listed elsewhere as the board president of Vocart. Um, and I think she's listed as a third, uh, third role somewhere else. So I'm not clear whom she's representing and how she's representing them. Uh, <clears throat> they keep saying it will be a sensory experience for people of all abilities, but I do not have any idea of what the event will look like, what those activities will be uh, and how they are uh, divided according to each of the five sense, senses. They're going to, they plan on doing paper and virtual surveys for the festival, but again, they don't explain that if they're going to do that beforehand, if they're going to do that afterwards, if uh, what will they be asking? Are they using it for planning purposes or evaluative purposes? 
They also plan to host a post-event town hall via Zoom. And how do they uh, plan to get people to participate? What would be the incentive for people to do that? Uh, the, the newspaper article they had as an example on nwi.com, uh, I could not see because it's a, you have to sign in. You can only be, uh, uh, you have to have an account in order to view the article. Uh, the Facebook has only 189 followers, although there are frequent informative posts, including at least one in Spanish, which is good. They say it's going to involve 15 artists in one place, but up front, they, at the application, they said five artists, one for each of the senses. Um, they do have an event coordinator and the timeline seems reasonable, but where is the planning of the event itself, its structure, uh, no explanation of how the artists will relate to the five senses. And in the grant request, the, the budget, uh, the IAC grant request is $4,500 of the $5,000 budget. Again, are they not going to do this uh, project if they don't get the grant? Um, they, in the expenses, they say five, $300, excuse me, to administrative costs, uh, but it is an all volunteer organization. So I assume that's not going to staff time and, and what are then administrative costs? Or do they really mean supplies? Um, there is a good explanation though of in-kind uh, support through t-shirts, ads in the newspaper and tables and chairs for the event itself. Thank you, Elaine. Before I move to general discussion, uh, Paige and Benjamin have asked if everyone will refresh their web portal using the top, top button at the, um, the top of your screen. They've also recommended uh, that Chrome works best for the per portal. Uh, if you are just tuning in, we're just having some technical difficulties accessing the portal on the back end. So that is what that is for. Are people still having issues getting into the portal? Perfect. All right, well then we'll move on to general discussion, opening this discussion to the panel for any additional or new comments. So I think Jane and Elaine did a, a really good job of um, explaining what my feelings were for this grant. Um, I also wanted to know a little bit more about the post event town hall meeting that they're gonna have and what that would look like and who would be um, engaged in that um, meeting. Thank you, Mary. Are there any additional comments? I just have one quick additional comment and I apologize if this has already been said, um, working through technical difficulties here. Um, I would have just like, um, I would have just been a little more interested in knowing how each of these um, experiences would have been more inclusive, um, knowing that this is for um, participants of all abilities, um, interested to know how the artists might be um, trained in adapting or accommodating their program to be more accessible. Um, if they are experienced in that and have additional training information uh, um, in their background could have um, strengthened the proposal. Thank you. Are there any further comments? Yes, now that I can get back on and see um, the, um, uh, it was also unclear to me that they, they stress that they're a volunteer organization and they, the volunteers are quite active, but it's not clear how many volunteers will be involved in this particular project and what their roles would be. They name an co event coordinator, but the event coordinator obviously cannot do everything. Thank you, Elaine. Any final comments? Seeing that the discussion is finished, I'll ask all panelists to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Will you please do this for both the Volunteers Office for Community Accessibility Resource Training, as well as Neighbors Broadcasting, DBA, WVLP, LP. I noticed that I changed my score on one, but it didn't change on the dashboard. Thank you, Jane. Um, bring that up to Paige and Benjamin. 
this may be something that we'll have to handle outside of the, the panel. Does everyone need more time or have you finished updating your scores? I need more time. Thank you, Jane. All right, everyone, I've been asked to um, say our conclusion by Paige and Benjamin. So uh, I just wanna first off to say thank you to all the panelists for your thorough, thorough comments and critiques, as well as for the IAC staff for helping us put this together. Uh, this concludes the fiscal year 2020, 2022 Region One Arts Organization Support Grant Panel. Applicants will be notified of, their, of the status of their grant following the June commission meeting. If you have any questions, please contact your grant program manager, Kelly Freeman. Thank you all so much and have a great rest of your day.